going on? What's going on, everybody? Um, we're going to let a few more people get into the room before we start this story time. Um, if you guys are just going to be checking this out a little bit later on, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about one particular time where I met an artist on a plane that I later wind up working with um, years later. So you never know the power of networking. So it's really important um, to make sure that whenever you're meeting an artist out or whatever the situation of the case may be, that you're putting your best foot forward. So story time, story time. So hi, for those that are just tuning in, my name is Kerry, um, AKA Kerry Too Smooth, Kerry Marshall, uh, Smooth. Um, I've been playing guitar for well over 20 years. Um, I've played with a lot of your the greats in the industry. Um, I've worked with Drulo, I've worked with the Black Eyed Peas, Tori Kelly, Sean Kingston, Ty Dolla Sign, Trey Songs, and a host of others, Melanie Fiona, Grace Weber, Keanu Lede, a whole bunch of people. And I've worked on a lot of different records. And so today I want to take this time out to talk about some story time. I know a lot of times people are like, man, I see you teach on YouTube, but I don't, I don't really know who you are. So now you get a chance to know who I am. So let's talk about um, this uh, do I do sample packs? I do custom sample packs. So Capital Razor, if you have a question about that, you can email me at carry 2 smooth at gmail.com. Um, but let's go back to story time. So uh, when it comes to story time, this is what I want to talk about. So years ago, I was on a flight. I was playing with Jason Drillo at the time. We had to go do um, Isles of Malta, M MTV Isles of Malta. And I was out with Jason Drillo. And the person who I'm sitting beside is this legendary, phenomenal singer. I'm talking about when she sings, like she'll knock your socks off. She's phenomenal. Somebody that I've always wanted to work with. And I was just like, wow. It was Tori Kelly. I'm sitting on a plane right beside Tori Kelly to the point that everybody else that was in Drulo's band was like, yo, smooth, yo, smooth, let me get, let me get that seat, let me get that seat, let me get that seat. I was like, nah, I'm not moving, not moving. So when we were talking, I was telling Tori, like, listen, I know who you are. I'm not gonna make a big deal, but like once we get to Isles of Malta, once you get all your makeup and everything on, woo, 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 do you mind like if we grab a picture? So she was like, cool, yeah, definitely. So um, with Soundcheck, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm supporting them. I'm like, yo, man, y'all sounding great. Her band was killing. Mateus is on guitar, smashing. Um, and then at the show, they go on, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're back in the room. I'm like, yo, man, Tori, do you mind if we grab this picture? Now she was like, yeah, come on, come on. She remembered me and everything from on the plane being super nice, super chill, super cool, and took a picture with me. Fast forward, years later, I get a call um, asking me, like, Tori's working on a gospel project and her and Kurt Franklin, they're doing a lot of these performances and they, your name came up in the hat to, like, play guitar. Are you down to do it? And I was like, the, like, the Tori Kelly? Like, the Tori Kelly? They were like, yeah, man, Tori Kelly. So, like, four years later, um, it manifested. I got an opportunity to work with Tori Kelly. So if you go on my Instagram now, I posted a couple of different videos or you'll see me performing on the Late Late Show with James Gordon. Um, I did some YouTube performances with Tori Kelly. So... One thing I want to let you guys know, you never know, number one, who you're going to meet, how those relationships can foster into something that works out later on in life. So you always got to be on your A game. And what I mean by your A game is being a great people person, right? I could have been a horrible person, could have came and acted like I'm this arrogant person, like, oh man, I'm so good. Like, it's a pleasure for you to get to know me and miss that opportunity to just network and just be calm and just be cool and just be regular, what I've learned a lot of times when you're dealing with artists or you're dealing with people in general, just be your authentic self. Just be cool. Just be regular. And you never know how that'll manifest. Um, another story time when I was back in Birmingham and then I was playing with um, an artist named Clinton Babers and we we did like BET Music Matters in New York. So mind you, I think we I don't, we drove. I think we drove to New York from Birmingham in a minivan, did BET Music Matters. BJ Chicago Kid was on the same um, ticket. We opened up while we're in soundcheck. I remember um, Charlie Burrell was there on guitar and Chuck Gibson. And while we were there, I'm just in soundcheck. I'm like, yo, I'm a huge fan of these guys. I get their contact information. Fast forward years and years later, I just moved from Birmingham to um, L.A. And while I'm there, I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to figure out how to get on. I reach out to Charles or Chuck Gibson. And I was like, yo, Chuck. 
I'm brand new to the city, yo. If you need like a, a sub or anything, like church gig or whatever, I got you, bro. I just, I'm just trying to get my feet wet, you know what I'm saying, and try to get in the industry. And he called me for a gig to play at Sayers. So if you've ever been to LA, the Sayers Club is like one of the hot spots that you wanted to perform at um, in the city. And I remember he was like, yo, man, I, I got a rehearsal. Um, can you just suffer me and, and just play the, the Sayers gig? And I was like, are you kidding me? Man, heck yeah. Because I've been to Sayers plenty of the time watching some of the guys that I always admire on stages and trying to figure out how to get into that room. Lo and behold, off of a networking thing that I met Chuck years ago that I, I plugged in with Chuck and I was like, yo, man, if you ever need a sub, you know what I'm saying? Like if I ever move to LA, man, I definitely want to connect. I moved to LA. I'm like, yo, I, I reach out to Chuck. I'm like, yo, if I, I need a, you need a sub, man, just let me know. I know you're playing with like all these other people. Like if you need a sub, whatever. I subbed for him at Sayers, did such a great job. Um, years and not even years and years later, like later on that month, he was like, yo, um, Lettucey needs a guitar player. He put me, he plugged me in with Lettucey. Jason Derulo needs a, a guitar player. He plugged me in with Jason Derulo. Ty Dolla Sign needs a guitar player. He was the plug. But that all came from a relationship from when I was back in Birmingham, met him in Soundcheck when he was playing with BJ Chicago Kid, just got his contact information, got his number, was following each other on social media. And I, I never lost sight of that. So I'm telling you, when I tell the people, when I tell you guys here on this particular platform or in Carrie's camp, I'm always talking, I'm always preaching networking. That's why it's so important. You never know who you're going to meet and how it's going to manifest into you working it and jobs that you'll get. Had it not been for those relationships and those conversations and those meetings and those exchanging of information, I would have never been to the place that I'm at now. Like, so it's super important for you to just to understand I says, hi, I just joined. Did I miss anything? Yes, got some chops. You missed the story time. You missed the story time. You missed the story time. So it's really important to network. Let me go back and look at some of these questions and I'll, I'll recap some of the stories that I just talked about. Uh, it says, what's up from Brazil? It says, man, you're a beast. What, please give us stories, man. No doubt, got you. Darren Tori Kelly is wifey. <laughs> I don't blame you, for sure, for sure. All right, all right, so... To recap, I was talking about like years and years ago, I had to do Isles of Malta with uh, Tori Kelly. No, I'm sorry, with, uh, with Jason Derulo. I was sitting on a plane. The person that was sitting right next to me was Tori Kelly. Like she didn't have no makeup on. She was just real dressed down, but I knew who she was. I recognized her, but I didn't make a big deal about it. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I just, I didn't make a big deal about it. I sat on a plane right beside her and I looked over to her and I was just like, yo, Tori, my name is Carrie. I play guitar for Jason Derulo. I know you ain't got your makeup on, but like once you get out yourself together, do you mind if we grab a picture? And she was like, yeah, cool, definitely. I was cool. I didn't bother throughout the flight. I said what I had to say, you know what I'm saying? But while I was like on the flight, we were coming in, the rest of Drillo's band was coming through and it was like, yo, smooth, smooth. No, let me grab that seat, let me grab that seat. I was like, nah, bro, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry, I'm sitting here in this seat. So years and years later, I get a phone call. Tori Kelly and Kurt Franklin are working on a gospel project. They need a guitar player. They called me to come in and play that, that role. So I got a chance to play um, with Tori Kelly. I worked on like a lot of her gospel performances. Um, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see I posted some Way Back Wednesdays. I posted two of the different performances. We were on the Late Late Show, and then we did some content um, on YouTube. So I, I, I recorded all that kind of stuff, and I posted it. That's why I was saying the power of networking. And then I was also talking about when I first uh, met Chuck Gibson. Chuck Gibson is the reason that I started to play with a lot of different artists. I met him when I was in Birmingham. I was out with another artist named Clinton Babers. We drove all the way from Birmingham to New York to film BET Music Matters. And while I was there, he, Chuck and um, Charlie Burrell were both playing for um, BJ's Chicago Kid. I was in a sound check. I was like, bro, y'all guys is killing because they sound so sweet. And so I got the information, contact information. I got the social media and I was like, yo, I'm planning. I'm thinking about moving to LA. So Chuck was like, yo, once you move to LA, just hit me up and let me know. You know what I'm saying? So once I got there, I was there for, I was struggling. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was struggling. I, I almost forgot. And then I remember like, ah, I'm gonna reach out to Chuck Gibson. So Chuck was playing. He was in a rehearsal. He was like, yo, smooth. What you got going on tonight? It was a Friday night. I was like, man, I'm chilling. What, what, you, what you need, bro? He was like, yo, can you can you go hold down Sayers for me? Like, I'm, I'm running late from a rehearsal. Do you mind like doing the performance? And I was like, are you kidding me? Sayers is that legendary spot in LA that all the, the who's who's, were coming out like all types of artists, all types of celebrities, all types of people were in there. You wanted to be on stage because that was a great networking opportunity. So once I played, Chuck was like, man, you did a great job. 
after that, Chuck called me to do Legacy. Chuck called me to do Jason Derulo. Chuck called me to do Ty Dolla Sign. Chuck was my plug. But not having, if I had not networked years in advance when we were in New York and I met him like randomly, instead of acting like I was that guy, like, you know, I don't need no help, whatever, whatever. Like, my humbleness was just what, what he needed. Like, he saw a guy that was willing to work. He was good at his craft. And I was just, I was moldable. I was, I was able to like, you know what I'm saying? Chuck could give me insight. I remember we were talking on the live before that yesterday, somebody was acting like, if somebody gives you critiques, you like, how did you take it? Man, Chuck used to be on me. He's like, yo, Smooth, you overplaying, dress like this, fix, figure this out, do this, do this. It was a lot of situation that I was just like, I had to let my ego go and just realize, listen, he, he's already plugged in. He was the MD for a lot of different situations. He needed a sub. I was reliable. I could do that thing. So the one thing I tell you guys on here, and I say on, especially on YouTube and on, on Carrie's Camp, I'm always preaching the art of networking. You cannot forsake networking. Use your social media to network. Use your Instagrams, use your Facebooks because it's a it's a business card that people are looking on now. They want to see before they buy. So if you say that, oh, I play guitar or I sing or I do whatever you do, but you're not like advertising it, how do I know? Just because you tell me. So like you got to showcase what you can do. And like somebody just said, humility is needed. Like you got to be humble. Listen, nobody owes you nothing. You got to be humble. That ego, like you got to cut that out and just be regular, regular, regular. You know what I'm saying? Like, because nine times out of 10, you don't get gigs because you're talented. You get gigs because you're a good people person and people like you. Because you're on stage for maybe like an hour, two hours at a time. You're on a tour bus for like six hours, 12 hours, whatever the case may be. You, you're like, you got to learn how to develop those relationships. So it's super important. So that is the story time. That is the story time. All right. So let's go back and let's read some of these questions. I see some people made some comments. So I definitely want to read some of these. All right. Networking is key. Definitely. I just needed that. So true. I never said to anything in my 20s and it led to me um, being more comfortable in my 30s knowing the phone is going to ring. Definitely. Humility is needed. Sweet. Blessings. Appreciate that. Carry too smooth. It's hard to believe that you are you have a huge ego. No, no, I used to have a huge ego because when you're a small fish, or I'm sorry, when you're a big fish in a small pond and you're like the guy, like, so when I was playing in Birmingham, like I was the guy, I'm not gonna lie. So there was two bands in Birmingham. It was, it was Fifth Element and then Young Vocals and Precision Groove. And we were like, we were like rock stars, but I'm in my hometown. Like it's, I'm a big fish in a small pond. You go to LA, it's, you're in new waters, bro. So I go from fresh water to salt water. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm fresh. I don't know nobody. I know a couple people, but I don't really know nobody. Nobody really knows me. They may have seen me on YouTube, but they don't know me for real, for real. They don't know my personality. They don't know my countenance. They don't know how I do stuff. So yeah, so you go there. You got to learn how to humble yourself. I can't go in there and be like, yo, I'm on YouTube. People know me, man. I play for a couple different people. I play with Fantasia and Calvin Richardson. Like People know me, man. That does not work, but I've seen cats do that kind of stuff. Well, come up with this. Like, oh, I went to like this university. People know me. I know how to do that stuff, you turn people off. Don't do that. I'm trying to tell you all the time, don't be that guy or that girl. Don't be that person. Be humble, man. There's no need for egos. Let that go. There don't, ain't no need for none of that stuff. All right. Let's go back in there. It says, since I'm live, since I live in LA, now, do you ever go back to Birmingham to visit? Oh, I don't live in LA anymore. I moved to, I moved to Atlanta, man. So yeah, I go back to Birmingham all the time. <laughs> Every other weekend. My kids... My boys are in Birmingham, so I go to Birmingham every other weekend. Um, you are preaching, sir. Dope, dope, dope. Um, it's important not to come across as insincere when you're definitely when you're networking. That's that's for sure. That's what's up. And Carrie, I'm a huge fan. Uh, can you do "Let Go" by Calvin Richardson? I'll add it to the list. I've seen you play with Volpec. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been learning D'Angelo Untitled on your channel. That's what's up. So yeah, I mean like, you know, the story times that I wanted to share with you guys definitely about the networking, how it led to me performing with Tori Kelly. I met her on a plane. Um, networking when I was in Birmingham, went up to New York to do BET Music Matters, met Chuck, got his con contact, and he was the plug that plugged me in with a lot of the artists that I work with, you know. So it, it's networking can plug you in places or it's the currency. It's like, you know, relationships is the currency. So like a, a lot of times, 
the relationships that you have with different kind of artists, different kind of musicians can be the reason why your phone rings. You know what I'm saying? It's not all based off of the talent. You know what I mean? So you'll understand that a lot of the people that you see on TV, it's not based upon like, oh, he's the most talented person. Sometimes it's off a relationship. Like I'm going to call the homies if I, if I got to do a gig. And I'm like, yo, like we're, we're on BET and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to call the homies that I know. I'm not going to be like going on Instagram and be like, oh, that dude is super talented. Let me call him. I have to learn your whole personality, all that stuff. You may be a great bass player, let's just say, but a horrible person. I don't want to have to figure all that out. We only got a small window. So a lot of those times it's, it's based off a of relationship. So I want to preach that to you guys to understand how important relationships are. That being said, if you're brand new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe and click the bell to be notified because I'm always dropping nuggets from time to time and I'm doing lives and I want to let you guys know like so you can grab some of this heat. And if you've heard me ever mention about Carrie's Camp, this is the prime time to jump into Carrie's Camp because for the next um, few days, I'm going to allow you to join Carrie's Camp. And when I say allow me, I'm opening it up at this price point for $97. You can join Carrie's Camp for six months, but you have until the end of this month. And that's only because I'm celebrating reaching 100,000 subscribers because I'm super hype about it. And you're like, what is Carrie's Camp? If you never heard about it, what is it? So Carrie Camp, Carrie's Camp is an extensive program that's going to help you. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, it doesn't matter if you're intermediate or advanced, it's going to help you grow as a guitarist. It's going to take you from point A to point B. We have roadmaps for each different demographic that's going to help you grow, that's going to help shape your playing. If you play acoustic guitar, you want to learn how to play R&B, Carrie's Camp has that for you. But you know what, like, I love R&B, but I play in the church. We've got gospel courses for you. We've got gospel master classes for you. You can stay and you can join Carrie's Camp and still have access to that stuff. Oh, oh man, you know what? I love r and I've never heard anything. I mean, I'm brand new to it. I, I, I want to learn how to play. Let me help you. And the one thing that I tell people all the time, we're helping guitarists literally all over the world. And the great thing about Carrie's Camp is it's a community. It's an online community where you can network. Like we ju I just preached the point of the importance of networking. Let me help you. And so... We have live monthly Q and A, so we have a Q and A that's coming up. It's going to be December the second, which is the first Wednesday. Usually it's the first Thursday, but I got something going on, so it's going to be the first Wednesday. And I stay on the live until I answer all of the questions. It doesn't matter if you ask me the same question that somebody else asked me. I'm going to help you grow in your craft. So it doesn't matter if you've never seen a guitar before. We have the beginner series that's going to show you how you can go to like a guitar center, what kind of guitars to pick out, what pri what kind of price point, what kind of cables, what kind of strings. All of that stuff is in Carrie's Camp. If you're intermediate, but you're just like, yo, I want to grow my craft. I, I, I can hear it, but I can't play it. Or I can play it, but I don't know what I'm playing. We have all of that access is going to help you. We have a video cord library. We have so many modules that's going to help you. We have over 600 videos that are going to help you grow in your craft. And we, we break the modules down, to, especially if you're, you're struggling with ear training, where like you, you hear something, but you don't know how to play what you're hearing. I'm going to show you, help you how to identify, how to pick out the various notes to understand how to grow in your craft. If you have a, a problem with soloing or creating riffs, I'm going to show you how to create riffs, how to create solos, how to make it sound and feel like you're really making that thing sing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to show you how to do it. And I'm not one of these people where I'm going to show you, this is what you play, but I'm going to play this. No. I'm going to show you this and I want you to play it. I'm going to show you everything I got because that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a great thing. Do you ever do live chats or videos with Carrie's Camp members? Yes, Leo. Inside of the community all the time. So the live Q&A is a, live, it's a Zoom call where I have all of the members on and we record the session. So let's say you missed the session. You can go back and watch it at a later date. All right. There were some great comments that came in. So let me go back in and see some of the stuff that's, that's going on. Uh, I'm loving the amount of lives you've been putting out. That's what it's, it's all about, Rodney. Listen, that's what it's all about. Thank you, I'm 21. And dude, I'm from a small city, Edmonton, Alberta. I've been there before. And how do I network in a place where I'm at where there's no live music? The power of social media. You don't have to be in the same city to network with somebody. You can plug in and you can you can like you can start following like a whole bunch of their pictures and then DM and be like, yo, I think you're super talented. Yo, if you need somebody to like, you know, do some session work or do whatever. I'm available. You, and then you got to have some videos showcasing what you can do because if you can't showcase what you can do, then it won't help. Most of the people that program these shows that you watch on like the AMAs and the BT Awards and the Soul Train, they don't necessarily always live in LA. Sometimes they're just in another place. They just know how to program really well. Power of social media helps connect people all the time. Okay, it says, hello, huge fan from Brazil. That's what's up. It's always important to be out at jam sessions uh, to network people too. So many... Um, 
It says, always important to be out at, at jam sessions to network. I uh, says, too, so people can see and you know that you play. Yep, Alex is very important. Um, since Christmas is coming, do you have any songs for the holidays on your list you may upload in the future? Gospel Chops, I've uploaded several songs that I've done over the years. I mean, songs do not change. Um, so, like, there's plenty of songs that I've already uploaded, and I've even showed you guys how to play, like, this Christmas. I've showed you guys how to play a lot of different ones. So if you go and check those YouTube videos out, I'm sure you can find those. Um, Indy in the house, that's what's up. Can you teach me how to how to poker? No, I cannot teach you how to poker. I'm sorry. Uh, it's all about people. It says, yep, yeah, we talked about that. It says, do you got tabs on all this? We don't do tabs. And the reason why I don't give you tabs is because I don't want to handicap you. You're not going to be able to throw up tab in a, in like in a, in a rehearsal or in a session and just read the tabs. It's just not how it's going to work. So I teach you the philosophies, how to trust your ears, how to remember, how to use the fretboard and look at the reference dots in order to reference where you are. That's how I try to help you. Uh, Carrie uh, really shows his method. Definitely how to use it. It's almost like he doesn't care if folks take his style. No, not at all. I need you guys to understand, like, I'm at a point in my career where I'm so comfortable where I'm at and who I am and how I play that I want to give you guys the keys to the Corvette, keys to the Mercedes, keys to the Lambo, and be like, drive that mug. That's how confident I am. Because I want to look up on TV and be like, yo, that person that's performing, they're a camper. I get excited from, from watching your success. So I, I'm not one of these guys that's just like, you know what, like, man, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and try to sun y'all. That's not how I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's the young, that's the young whippersnapper, that's the young bull. I'm not going to really show them how to do whatever. I want y'all to get everything that I got. That's how, that's how I operate. All right, it says, nah, do hollow bodies uh, for starting. Nah, I never do a hollow body for starting. I, I'm telling you, that's not a, I would not start out with a hollow body for starting. It says, we all need to subscribe to Carrie's camp. That's what's up. Um, to, to, how many pedals do you use, usually roll with for an RB gig? Um, we, what are your favorites? So it just depends. So usually when I'm rolling to an RB gig, I usually use the all in one. I usually use, use the Helix because it's comparable, it's compact, and most airlines do not, they can't rip it apart. So that's what I normally use. All right. Um, what do you recommend for a nice jazz sound? Nice jazz sound is not too bright, so you gotta you gotta darken it up a little bit. So turn your top, tone knobs down. Um, hollow bodies play differently and feel differently than solid bodies. Um, they're harder to play. Um, is it expensive for for a starter guitar? Nah. Um, you could go buy like a Fender Jazz. I'm not sorry, Fender Jazz, but a Fender Strat. You can get a Squire model and be okay. Story time. Have you ever had? A time when you bombed on stage? Yeah, plenty of times when I was like younger in my career, when I first started playing, when I started playing on, on the, um, the Chitlin circuit, because I didn't really know the music. I didn't know what I was playing. I could just play what I heard, what I felt. And because I did not know what I was playing, yeah, there's plenty of times I bombed. Um, ba, 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 da, da, ba. <sighs> okay, cool. We got any more questions? Thank you, sir. Let's just see. Oh my goodness. All right, cool. All right, so hey, Carrie, have you ever played AMP SIM programs on the Line 6? I think I have. I think I have. I've played a, a couple on different um, patches and pedal boards that I set up. It says many amplifiers making popping. It says my amplifier is making popping and crackling noises sometimes, and my amplifier is brand new. Um, but I had the same guitar for four years. Is it the cables? Maybe it might be the cables. You might want to check the cables. Um, process of elimination. You know, go through and just see what's what's what. Um, are you mostly self-taught? Are there other guitarists that you can point to that you've that have helped you in your journey? Um, yeah, there are plenty of guitars that have helped me in my journey. They may not have necessarily taught me, but I've watched and I've learned like a lot of their uh, tendencies of what they tend to do when I've played on. I've gone to school, um, I've taken guitar for like three years, and then I've also, a lot of stuff has been self-taught and I've been a sponge and absorbed a lot of stuff. Um, would you ever do a tutorial on music production or making a full R&B track? So Leo, if you're a member of Carrie's Camp, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, I'm learning that one Usher tune 
you post it. That's what's dope. That's what's up. It says, as soon as I get my guitar, I'm joining the camp. Come on, man. Listen, I'm, now is the time, man. Yo, because it's not going to be at this price point for very long. And I'm trying to get as many people in the camp at this price point because I want to celebrate. You know, it's a celebration. So give me while I'm hot. Give me while I'm feeling like the way that I'm feeling. Uh, do Are Ibanez guitars good for R&B? I'm not a huge fan of Ibanez guitars. So I can't, I can't necessarily endorse Ibanez guitars, but I've seen a few people play Ibanez guitars when they're playing R&B. Um, would be nice to hear you do, you remind me with a reggaeton beat. Send me the beat. Um, Black Friday deals on Carrie's camp. Uh, I guess you could consider it a Black Friday deal. Um, you have until the end of the month to get into Carrie's camp at $97 for six months. You have until the end of the month to do so. I guess that's like a Black Friday deal. I guess you do that. At what point did you feel that you had mastered your craft? Um, mastered is such a, a loose term. Uh, I'm always constantly learning. I, I felt that I was at a point where I could play at a certain high level when I was probably, I think I got out of the army when I was like 27. So maybe two years later, 29. But again, when I was in the military, that was, that's like eight years of me not having like a, a consistent area or atmosphere for me to learn because I was a soldier. I was kicking in doors and like, you know what I'm saying, detaining people and going after insurgents. I wasn't playing guitar every day. And if I did play guitar, it wasn't like a high end guitar. It was really on my downtime when I was done with missions. I'm loving the D'Angelico Deluxe. Uh, Bedford HH Limited Series in Mahalo Body, Nasty Tone. Sweet. Anyone on the fence, uh, join this cat's insanely great educational. Appreciate that, Grant. Appreciate that, Grant. Appreciate that. Uh, it says, uh, did you ever, do you have a guitar with you um, in the service? So when I first got deployed to Iraq, it was like seven... I forget how many months later, but I ordered um, a, an Ovation Celebrity. And then I also used to, before I was playing, when I was deployed, I used to have like a, a Fender Strat, but it was like a Squire, it was a black one that I used to use to play around like kind of the barracks. And my roommates, my old roommate would tell you like, dope, Smooth used to play, or Marshall used to play like every night. He used to play guitar. It was, sometimes it was annoying, but I ain't lie. I, listen, I used to play every night. I used to try to go play at blues clubs, but I was like 17, 18, trying to sneak into the blues clubs and play the blues clubs. You know what I mean? I was just trying to get my feet wet. Uh, my nephew is in the service. How will his playing time be affected? It just depends on what his, his MOS is or his job is. You know what I mean? If you're in garrison, you can literally play every day because, again, it's just like going to work like a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? If you deploy, then that's when it can kind of get a little tricky on what you're doing. And depending on what your job is. My job was a 13 Fox. I was in combat arms. So my I could not just sit around and just play guitar every single day when I was deployed. You know what I mean? That's just what it was. It's just what it is. Uh, I'm an African guitarist. How to travel with music. Uh, so you're going to have to network or you have to find artists that are in your particular area that travel out different ways. You got to have a passport. I'm telling you, I've gotten so many gigs because I had a passport and most guitarists didn't have a passport. So you need to have a valid passport if you want to travel and do stuff like that. Um, how do you manage your growing? How did you manage your growing musical career while working another job? before it became a full-time job. So Leo, I never, like when I started to do music full-time, I never had a nine to five. So I was doing other things before. So I was going to school when I got out of the military, still playing music on the side. Um, I was working as a personal trainer. I used to deliver uh, uh, different kind of pharmaceuticals for different kind of apothecaries. So I did all of that before, but once I became serious about like playing music full time, I didn't have any other nine to five. That was my fame. That was my full time gig. I played at a very prominent church in Birmingham. So I was making a lot of money doing that while I was still gigging throughout the week or I would drive on the weekends and play on the weekends. Um, do you ever have gigs outside the U.S.? This is heavy. Have, have you ever have you ever do gigs outside the U.S.? Yes. So my first gig with Jason Derulo was in Morocco. We played in front of 150,000. I just did story time where I talked about doing Isles of Malta. Malta is an island. Um, yes, I've done St. Kitts so many times. I've been to Germany so many times. I've been to Europe uh, so many times, like, just playing music. So, yeah, I've done all that stuff. 
Um, in addition to Carrie's Camp, you get access to the Gospel Guitar Guide and the Acoustic Series and the Beginner Series for $97. Let me just put that out there. I wanted to stop right here and pause for the cause and let you guys know exactly what you're getting access to. So in, in addition to getting access to Carrie's Camp, you're getting access to the Gospel Guitar Guide, the Acoustic Series, and the Beginner Series, only for $97. And I'm telling you, this is such a steal, like you would be almost insane to not jump in while the water is hot, as hot as it is. You definitely want to jump in and become um, a member now and just get all this information. And in six months, you're going to grow so much in your craft. It's retarded how much you're going to grow. I'm telling you. <laughs> Y'all better recognize. <laughs> I appreciate that. Can you do a, a lesson on a gospel version of Amazing Grace? There's so many versions of Amazing Grace, um, which... But what I'll do is I'll start to kind of develop because it just depends if you're playing by yourself or you're playing with the singer. So I'll just kind of I'll kind of work on something and I'll put that together. Matter of fact, let me write that down. You know what I'm saying? Amazing Grace lesson. Amazing Grace guitar lesson. All right. Got that locked in. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what do you think about weekly guitar practice routines? Um, so if you're going to do weekly guitar practice routines, you need to find the, and develop the areas that you're weak in. So if you're weak in doing like, um, pick accuracy, you want to work on that. If you're weak in knowing your scales, if you're weak in knowing like the positions on the neck of the guitar or like what keys you're playing in, you got to find out what's area you're, you're weak in and like break it up your in your week and to do time management to kind of figure out like, okay, on Mondays, I'm going to focus in on this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever the case may be. It's just so that way you can grow and develop those areas that you're weak in. Um, bum, bum. Hey, do yourselves a favor and just purchase the yearly membership. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Yeah, you could definitely do a yearly subscription. You could definitely do it. But I know everybody is not at that particular point where they can. So I, I lowered the price point right now to celebrate the fact that we reached 100,000 subscribers. So you, you have those options. Um, would those times to travel affect guitar action like the weather? No, because you have to get a case like a mono case. So I, I endorse mono cases because that's who I play. That's what I use. So I've never had anybody, um, I've never had any problems. Usually what I used to do when I first started doing, I would just detune my guitar so I didn't have to worry about the action on the guitar. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. That's just, I'm just being honest and I'm being real. <laughs> sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Okay, I need to get me a good guitar first. Come on, get you a good guitar, man. Can you do a lesson on Until We Meet Again by Kirk Franklin? Um, I'll add it on the list, but I have so many things that I'm focusing on. It's more than just teaching you how to play a song. It's teaching you, um, Jose, and anybody else is paying attention to the concept so that you can take this guitar. I don't know if you guys can see my guitar that I have over here. You can take this guitar and play the songs yourself. That's what I want to do. That's how you're going to win. You can't just, it's more than just me showing you how to do it. Like in me playing, this is how you, on. so on this song, you go to A, to the B. I want to show you the concept so you can use your ears. You can hear the track and be like, oh, okay. I now I know what key they're in. Oh, okay. So now I know what the progression is and write it down and you can figure it out for yourself. That's how I'm going to help you guys grow. So if you want to be, if you want to know how to find your tone, I'm telling you, you need to sign up to carriescamp.com. I have a whole section where I talk about how to find your tone. All right. Says, do you ever warm up? It says, do you warm up every time or do you just come out blazing every time? I warm up, man. Listen, and then some of my warm ups, I'll be blazing in my warm ups. I'm just gonna keep it 100 with you. But that's come from years of experience of just playing and like just chilling and just working with the guitar. I didn't always come out the gate this way, but now I'm at a level like if I decide to do a warm up, I'm 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 killing it. You know what I mean? Because of all of the time that I spent in learning this craft, because I know this guitar in and out. I don't know everything about this guitar, but I know a lot. I know a lot to be dangerous. I know a lot to keep a job. I know a lot to get a job. I know a lot to get an audition, how to maintain an audition, how to win the audition, how to get the gig, how to keep the gig, how to stay on the gig, how to do performances on TV. I know a lot. So the stuff that I know, I'm transferring that to you. Like if I could do it osmosis, I would give it to you, but I'm showing you how to do it through these lessons. That's exactly what I'm doing. What time is your live stream scheduled? Or how can, so you have to be a camper. So if you're a camper, you're notified because we send out emails to every individual camper explaining what time 
it is to become, you know, we're doing these lives and the passwords and everything that you need to have in order to become um, on the live. So trust and believe. So if you want to be a camper, we send you all the information. I don't just put out like, you know, a random carrier pigeon that holds us messages and drops it down. You get an email. So we're going to explain everything is user friendly. I cannot express how user friendly it is. You know what I mean? Greetings from Peru. That's what's up. Ever used a Kemper? I used it once. I mean, to be honest with you, because it was somebody else's setup and it wasn't my setup, I, I just, it, I'm not a huge fan. You know what I mean? What's the simplest way to remember the number system? Join Carrie's camp and I'll show you exactly the simplest way to remember the number system. I normally practice watching tapes such as the Canton Spirituals, etc. Then I'll play along with the song. Is that a good method? You do what you got to do, gospel chops. So like, if that's what you got, that's what you got. I did the same thing. I used to listen to like the, the keynotes, um, the Canton Spirituals, Slim and the Supreme Angels. Man, I used to listen to all of that kind of stuff. I used to play along with, my dad had an eight track. I used to play along with his eight track back, way back in the day with the gospel keynotes. You know what I'm saying? With Al Green when he was singing gospel songs. I used to, all of that stuff, bro. So like, that's what you got. That's the method you got. You definitely got to use what you got. But learning and understanding the principles so that when you do play along with these videos, you know how to play along with these videos. So if you hear something, they do something, you'd be like, oh, snap, let me rewind that. I know exactly how to make that happen. You know what I mean? That's what you want to do. How do you find your own style? So Jamal, what you do is like, you work on the concepts that you like, and then the concepts that you like, you continue to keep critiquing it and massaging and massaging until you get to the place that you like, oh, this is what I like. This is how I'm going to sound the way that I sound. My uncle tells me to go to my room and work on my chords. Then and listen, and you got to listen. If they tell you to work on your chords, you need to do, you need to lock in, work on them chords. You know what I'm saying? Go to the video chord library, put your hands in it and really understand how to play them chords. Don't cheat. I used to cheat. I used to not play my chords fully. I used to not like play the, all the full chords. I used to pluck out a, pluck a, a couple notes and pluck them out. People would know you get exposed. So you got to learn how to play those chords. That's why we have the video chord library in Carrie's Camp to really show you how to do that and how to play exactly what's happening in most songs. So to understand Laugh Out Loud, I'll send you my performance pack. Um, how would you describe the differences between the intermediate and advanced guitar level? So intermediate. So one thing I want to let you guys know, it's not about how many years you've, you've been around guitar. That's, it's about how you can play and your level of understanding. So if you don't, you can't regurgitate. If I say, yo, give me a simple progression. We're in the key of C. I'm doing such and such and such. And you look at me like, bro, I don't have, I don't know what you're talking about. Then you're probably not advanced. You probably are intermediate or you may even be a beginner. So we have to like unlearn some some bad habits, relearn some new habits that are going to help you be successful. Uh, you're giving great advice, man. Thanks. That's what it's all about. I'm going to join your camp today, bro. Come on, Matt. Listen, come on, Matt. We, I'm looking I'm looking specifically for your name. So you better join. You don't tell me you join. I need to see you in the, in the camp today. <laughs> uh, sweet, 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 sweet. Appreciate you, brother. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Um, doom, 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 doom. What else? Bear's beard. You're a Marty Swartz. Uh, man, Marty's my guy, bro. Like, I'm, I'm never gonna compete, or it's never a competition with Marty. Marty's my guy, man. Marty's looked out for me plenty of times. Has taken me under his wing, show me the ropes, man. Marty's my guy, bro. I saw your video with Vertex. You ever use any of their pedals? Yes. Um, I don't know if you can see the pedal board back there. I got plenty of Vertex pedals on that pedal board way back there. So, yeah. You look for Clayton to be joining too? All right, Clayton. I'm looking for you to join too. So, Hold on. Now I'm writing down your name. Don't be just Clayton is gonna be joining. Don't be just be saying you're gonna join and I'm gonna be looking for you. Uh might as well join Carrie's. <laughs> He's the most patient teacher I've ever pa patient teacher that I've ever worked with. Man, I appreciate that. Listen, because I I want to help everybody. It doesn't matter what level, it doesn't matter how if it takes you a long time to learn. I want to work with you until you get it. It's not one of those like, man, I get frustrated. All right, man, move on. I want to work with you guys so you get it because once you get it, you got it. And then you can duplicate it and you can play it anytime you want to. You know what I mean? 
Uh, you were the first guitarist to get me learning how to play R&B. I'm finna join Carrie's Camp. All right, Leo, I'm adding your name to the list too. I'm looking for you to join, Leo. I'm, don't be playing with me. Me too, Anthony, I'm looking for you. Listen, I'm excited. Y'all better not give me hype, bro. I'm super hyped to see y'all joining Carrie's Camp. So that's what it's all about, man. Y'all listen, y'all making my day. Right before Thanksgiving too? Are you kidding me? I'm so hyped right now, bro. I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to calm down. Listen, Grant, you better let them know we're trying to see y'all in the community, man. We want to see y'all. We want to welcome y'all in. Listen, the first live Q&A that we're going to be doing is going to be on Wednesday, December 2nd. I'm looking for y'all guys to join, so y'all better be in the community. I'm going to come find y'all. <laughs> all right, all right. How much time do you practice? Man, I practice all the time, probably more than I want to even tell y'all because that I love it. That's the difference between me. Like, I'm not practicing for the sake of just practicing. I practice for the sake of me loving it. Now, when I have some situations, then I practice specifically for those situations. But every day, man, I'm in here. If y'all want to go look at my, my Instagram, late last night, I was working on a riff because I want to make that thing sing, bro. Like, I pride myself on my tone, on how I play. I, I pride myself on that. But I'm, I'm constantly working on my craft because I have the time and the flexibility to do that. Everybody doesn't have that. So that's why I help condense and show you how to get the most out of the time by in Carrie's camp. That's the whole point. Like everybody didn't have the freedom to just sit here and play guitar or have multiple guitars that they can play. Sometimes all you got is one and you got to figure out how to make it is or you don't have any pedals. This is what you got. I show you how to use what you have in order to make it sound the way that you want it to sound. Yo, Carrie, I'm, it says I'm in, but I think I paid but I don't think I paid anything. Does it come after the seven day? So CD, if you want to join up right now, what you need to do is go to carriescamp.com slash 100, okay? So that is carriescamp, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com slash 100. CD, I better see you in there. I better, ooh, I better see you in there. <laughs> Can I get a scholarship? This, guy, this is the scholarship right here. I'm telling y'all how to get in. So scholarships don't like mean that you don't have to pay anything. Sometimes scholarship is just a certain amount of money. So I, this is the scholarship, bro. You got to jump in now while the water is hot. Yeah, man. So my practice routines are different, okay? Practice routines are different, definitely. But I love what I do. You know what I'm saying? I do what I love. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do you always play plugged in or into an amp? So gospel chop is just depends. So usually in my home setup, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna plug directly and I'm gonna use my monitors. I'm not trying to plug up and, and set up amps because it can be too loud for me right now. And it's just like having to get up and having to go over. And just, I mean, I'm sitting right here so I can just do everything I need to do right here. So I usually just use, um, my monitors, I just plug into my interface and I play. So Jody, what you get for $97 is you get access to Carrie's Camp. Well over 600 videos, you get access to the, to the gospel um, guitar masterclass, to the acoustic beginner series, and you get access to the beginner um, guitar series. There's so much information, you get access to the live Q&A, to the song request tutorials, um, to Carrie's Corner. So if I haven't told you guys about Carrie's Corner. So what I normally do is I get industry guitarists and I have them come in and it's like an interview style and I'm asking them questions and I open it up to the students. So let's just say I had Justin Bieber's guitar player on. I, I let the students know like, yo, who, who he plays for. Some people already knew and they get to ask him questions like, what did you do when you first learned? I'm letting you get stuff and access that you would normally get with clinics you get that with Carrie's Camp because in most clinics, you don't get a chance to ask your question. We stay on there until you ask your question. I usually talk to the guitars or the people that are teaching. We had John Legend's guitarist player, a guitar player on. We had the guy who played with Ty Tribute when he first started. We, we have different guys. We have Melanie Fay on. We have a lot of different people that, that give you information and show you insight. We had Taylor G that plays for Ari Lennox. We've had a lot of people. We've had, I even had Walls on. So, I mean, like we've had Eric Walls. We've had a lot of people, you know what I mean? 
What is your question? You don't answer my question. What is your question, bro? Or ma'am, I don't know. What is your question? Uh, what, what guitar is that on adding the sauce? So that is a um, Jazz Master by, by Iconic Guitars. It's, that particular model is called the um, Elegante. Thank you for giving me the link. Ah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Look for my name, Carrie. Oh, I saw your name come through, CD. I saw your name come through. I saw you. Listen, while we were talking, I saw your name come through. I'm not playing. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm a metalhead, but I feel the need to expand my horizon to discover new territories. I'm a camper. Yo, that's what's up. Um, I've joined for six months, and it's worth every penny. That's what I appreciate it, man. Listen, that's what it's all about. It's about, listen... I just want to be able to give you some insight, even if you're brand new to the genre. I just want to help you grow. So that way you can use some of the same concepts to play metal. You know what I'm saying? Like you can use some of the same concepts to shred so you know exactly how to make it sound good whenever you start to shred. That's what it's all about. My question is, what is your practice schedule? All right. So every day my practice schedule changes. Some days I will start practicing at like seven o'clock in the morning and I may not finish until well over eight o'clock at night. So it just depends. Some days I may work on like soloing. Some days I may work on chord progression. Some days I may work on my timing. Some days I may work on placement when I'm playing on a record. It just all varies. It's never the same. Or if I have a gig, then I'm going to work on practicing for the gig. That's what's going to happen. You know what I mean? The Jazzmaster Elegante is by Iconic Guitars, not by Fenders, by Iconic Guitars. Do you use virtual amps more or physical gear? So right now I'm not using any gear. I'm just plugged directly into my interface and I'm playing through Logic. So I don't, I don't use any gear. But when I am using gear, you see that hole set up in the back. So that bad cat. And that Helix, that's what I'm using whenever I'm using a live situation. So I have a couple of live situations that's going to be coming up shortly next month. And that's what I'll be using. Unless they have backline. Now, if they have backline, then I'm just using the Helix in my guitar. How do you work on your improvisation? Every day I have to be intentional. So I'm always trying to think of sing song like lines or I know a lot of different songs. So I'll, ch I'll try to be like a DJ and put those songs over different records. That's what I do when I'm working on improvisation. If you want to work on your improvisation even better, join a church, bro. That's probably one of the best places you can learn how to improvise is by playing at church because people sing the same song, five different keys, and you have to be the one that's going to have to figure it out. So definitely for sure. Um, what would you recommend for someone who has extremely large hands? So you want to find a guitar that fits the neck, that neck profile that fits your hands. So just because you have extremely large hands doesn't mean that you can't play. You got to find whatever fits. So maybe Les Paul is better for you. You know what I'm saying? You got to figure out, or maybe they make a, a guitar that has a different kind of neck profile. So you have C shapes, you have D shapes, you have slim tapered necks, you have wide fats. There are all types of different neck types that you got to figure out that what feels good to you. So once you find that kind of feel, that feels good to you, then you want to start ordering or getting guitars with that same kind of profile. And that way it'll make it easier, more comfortable whenever you play. Uh, ha ha ha. This man said he only used the, the Helix one or two times. Um, you know, everybody uses it differently. I mean, I, I promise you, I only use it for live settings. Um, I've got plenty of videos on my Instagram that, that showcase when I was using it. Uh, you need to go in person and check them out. Hard with COVID, but worth it. Definitely. Um, how do you go about your friends? Uh, how do you go about your triads? So if I'm playing triads, I usually use a few because I want to place them specifically in songs so it has a certain kind of feel. But I don't use them all the time because I don't want to overuse them. Uh, let's go back. All right, I'm gonna. I've got a few more minutes, and I have to get ready to sign off, cause um, 
I've been on here almost an hour, you know what I'm saying? Sharing with you guys, sharing the love. If you're brand new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and click the bell to be notified. If you're trying to get into Carrie's camp, now is the time to do it. So you can join, you have until now, until the end of the month to join at this price point at $97 for six months. And it is a great deal. If you've heard people in the comments or you've seen some of the people say like they've given shout outs, they've talked about how much of a good deal it is. They've talked about my character and my teaching ability is going to help you. So, oh, Leo, you just signed up for the trial. Is there a link? Yes. So the link, Leo, to get the $97 is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. OK. All right, man. Listen, I love you guys. I got to get ready to go, man. You guys are great. And. Listen, if you subscribe and click the bell to be notified, you guys will be on here the next time I jump on. So I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys soon.